हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू फेयर्स क्लाउड लर्न टू लीड गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल दी स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट करंट फेयर्स ऑफ सेकंड ऑफ अप्रैल 2022 यू कैन सी टू बेस्ट इमेजेस ऑफ द डे बट टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट करंट फेयर सो वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल लास्ट बट आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग यू ऑल दी स्टूडेंट दैट यू हैव टू डाउनलोड आर एप्लीकेशन करियर्स क्लाउड फ्रॉम द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स लिंक आफ्टर दैट लॉग इन विद द ईमेल आई then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe a current fairs for one year as well as for two years both the subscription prices are very much low but how we are covering this current fair we are providing you daily section in the daily you will see three things one is detail second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on daily basis next is the weekly section again you will receive three things one is detail second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis most important section is the monthly and we are providing four type of pdfs one is detail second is question and answer format third is best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and fourth one is pocket pdf it means two liners and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs in quick format before your exam but to enhance your performance further we are providing 20 most important topic wise pdf it means if you want to cover one particular topic then you can use this topic wise pdf If you are a banking student, we are providing three things. One is detail, second is question and answer format, and third is the quiz section. But all these three things are only related to banking and economy, and you can attempt this quiz only on our application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF. We are providing detailed budget and economic survey. Expected question and answer will be provided to you so that you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey. If you are appearing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing you state current fair, and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under only one subscription. You have to just download our application Careers Cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this Crack Current Fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But if you are a new student, you are just starting your preparation, then I am advising you to subscribe for two years. and we are providing 10% extra discount on both subscriptions if you use this code ash10 and if you have any query you can email us or you can call us on this number or email id so let's start 2nd of april 2022 current fair but first of all you have to like this video you have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time here is the first question who has been appointed as the new chief executive officer or ceo of world largest express transportation company which is known as fedex i think all the students know about this company fedex and who is appointed as the new chief executive officer of this company and answer of this question is raj subramanyam so c is the answer so the indian american raj subramanyam has appointed as the new chief executive officer of world largest express transportation company which is known as fedex but remember earlier this position was with frederick frederick w smith this was the person who was earlier the ce of this company fedex and he was also the founder of this company he founded this fedex in 1971 but he will remain as the chairman of this company but uh, new ceo will be raj subramanyam and the chairman will be frederick w smith and remember fedex is founded by frederick w smith in 1971 this is world largest express transportation company so he joined fedex in 1991 we are talking about raj subramanyam in marketing roles and later appointed as the chief vice president and chief marketing and communication officer and raj was selected as the fedex board of directors in 2020 and served as the president and ceo of fedex express in canada but you don't have to remember this is just for information so that you can recall the news for long time period but remember who is appointed as the ceo of world largest express transportation company fedex this is raj subramanyam now we are moving to the next question next question is in the very important question section but first of all you have to like this video share this video as much as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join a telegram group from the description box link here is the question india and which country conducted the 20th edition of bilateral naval exercise named as varuna 2022 and it was held in which area so you have to tell me two things that varuna exercise conducted between india and which country one is the name of the country second the place where this exercise held 
and answer of this question is france india and france conducted this 20th edition of bilateral naval exercise which is known as varuna and it was conducted in arabian sea so answer of this question is d and this exercise started on 30th of march 2022 and it ended on 3rd of april 2022 so you can see here this is india and france who conducted 20th edition remember the edition number and this is the naval exercise between india and france and it conducted in arabian sea and various units from both the navies participated in the exercise including ships submarines maritime patrol aircraft fighter aircraft and helicopters and these units will work to improve and enhance their maritime operational skills develop interoperability to conduct maritime security operations and demonstrate their commitment to the regional peace security and stability as an integrated force and the varuna exercise or the series of exercise provide both the navies opportunities to learn from each other best practices and the exercise sets the stage for the operational level understanding between the two navies like india and france and this exercise highlighted both nations shared commitment to the global maritime commons like security safety and freedom and remember who is the head of uh, indian navy it means the chief of naval staff and he is admiral r hari kumar r hari kumar moving to next question prime minister narendra modi addressed the dash edition of bimstech summit and it is hosted by which country so you have to remember prime minister narendra modi addressed from the indian side but you have to tell me this is which edition of bimstech summit and it is hosted by which country it means who is the chairman of this bimstech summit and answer of this question is sri lanka is the chair of this summit and this is the fifth edition of bimstech summit so narendra modi the prime minister of india participated and addressed the fifth bimstech summit bimstech stands for bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation summit and it is hosted in virtual mode by sri lanka sri lanka because the chair of bimstech from september 2018 to march 2022 lies with sri lanka that's why sri lanka hosted this bimstech summit so prime minister narendra modi addressed the fifth bimstech summit virtually and this is bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation and it was held in colombo sri lanka and 2022 marks the 25th year of establishment of bimstech so you have to remember because bimstech was established in 1997 so this is the 25th year or 20th fifth anniversary of establishment of bimstech and the theme of this fifth summit was towards a resilient region prosperous economies and healthy people and india to provide usd 1 million to bimstech to increase its operational budget this is very important because the announcement was made in the backdrop of making early progress on the proposal of the bimstech free trade agreement or fta to enhance mutual business between the bimstech countries and remember because uh, sri lanka chairmanship will end in march 2022 that's why thailand will assume the chairmanship of bimstech from 2022 to 2023 so now thailand is the chairman of this bimstech this is very very important and uh, this bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation was established in the year of 1997 remember and total member countries are seven like india is one of the seven countries bangladesh is there bhutan is there nepal sri lanka myanmar and thailand these are the seven countries who are the member of bimstech move into next question what is the name of the program recently launched by chief justice of india for transmitting judicial orders and name of this program is faster so c is the answer and what is the meaning of faster faster stands for fast and secure transmission of electronic records i am repeating again fast and secure transmission of electronic record and this is chief justice of india n v ramana ji who virtually launched this program which is known as faster so remember and you can also see here the picture of justice n v ramana ji and it is a digital platform to communicate interim orders or the temporary orders stay orders bail orders etc of the supreme court to the authorities concerned through a secured electronic communication channel so it allow court orders to be transmitted in a quick and secure manner or quick and secure electronic format and the main objective is to eliminate the situation in which inmates release is delayed even after the supreme court grant them bail because the faster program was created in response to a news report published in july 2021 regarding prisoner release delay so that's why the main objective is to eliminate the situation in which inmates release is delayed it is developed on a war footing by the registry in collaboration with the national informatic center 
So just remember the name of the program is FASTER. What is the meaning of FASTER? FASTER stands for Fast and Secure Transmission of Electronic Records and it is released or virtually launched by Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramanaji. Moving to next question. A book titled Crunch Time, Narendra Modi's National Security Crisis, authored by whom? So this book is very important because this book is released by Minakshi Lekhi ji, who is the Union Minister of State for External Affairs and uh, this book is released at India International Center in New Delhi. That's why this book is important because it is released by Minakshi Lekhi and name of the book is Crunch Time. It is Narendra Modi's National Security Crisis and answer of this question is Dr. Shriram Cholia. So D is the answer. You can see here. This is Minakshi Lekhi who released this book and name of the book is Crunch Time and this is Narendra Modi's National Security Crisis. So you have to remember the book was published by Rupa Publication India and specially the book was released by Minakshi Lekhi that's why the book highlights the much needed public faith in the state or the government to protect the country from security threats posed by India external adversaries. And the book analyzes Prime Minister Modi's series of decision-making moves during the crisis with China as well as with Pakistan. So you have to just remember the name of the book is Crunch Time. And this book is written by Dr. Shriram Cholia. And this book is released by Minakshi Lekhi, who is currently the Union Minister of State for External Affairs. Moving to next question. In which city first of its kind international cruise terminal will be commissioned and by which year? So you have to tell me two things. One is the name of the city under which this international cruise terminal will be started and it will be commissioned by which year. And this city is Mumbai and it will be commissioned by 2024. So it is the first of its kind. Mumbai International Cruise Terminal is expected to be commissioned by July 2024. So you can see here Mumbai International Cruise Terminal to be commissioned by July 2024. And uh, it is the sea cruise terminal which will be coming up at the BPX Indra Dock in Maharashtra. So it will be established in Maharashtra. So it is built on an area of 4.15 lakh square feet. And the first of its kind iconic sea cruise terminal in India. Two cruise ships will be able to berth at the time on the dock. And the total projected cost of this project is 495 crore rupees. However, rupees 303 crore rupees will be incurred by Mumbai Port Authority and the remaining will be by private operators. And the terminal will have a capacity of handling 200 ships and 1 million passengers per annum. So this will definitely boost the growth of India and definitely it will provide logistic support to the India. So this is very, very important and it will be commissioned in July 2024. Moving to next question. India and which country conducted a joint training exercise which is known as Lamitier 2022. This is also known as Lamitier 2022. And this is the exercise between India and Seychelles. And remember, this is the ninth edition of this exercise. So ninth edition of India, Seychelles joint training exercise. This is 10 day long exercise. And it was conducted between the Indian Army as well as the Seychelles Defense Forces. And it is conducted at Seychelles Defense Academy in Seychelles. And it started from 22nd of March to 31st of March. It means it started on the 22nd of March and it ended on 31st of March 2022. And you can see here, this is the ninth edition. You have to remember India Seychelles Joint Military Exercise, Lamitier 2022. And it conducted in Seychelles. And this is a 10 day long exercise features a range of complex military drills, demonstration and discussions which enhance the level of defense cooperation between Indian Army and Seychelles Defense Forces. And Lamitier 2022 training exercise focused on broadening the aim of cooperation towards the coexistence in the Indo-Pacific region. And it will further manifest in enhancing the bilateral relationship between the two countries like India and Seychelles. And remember, we are talking about army exercise or the military exercise. That's why you have to remember chief of army staff and he is General Manoj Mukund Narwaneji. So remember, answer of this question is B, Seychelles. And what is the name of the capital of Seychelles? This is Victoria. Victoria. And who is the president? President is Vewal Ram Kalavan. Vewal Ram Kalavan. You can remember the name and he is the president of Seychelles. Moving to next question. RB extended the deadline for implementation of the cassette swap in the ATMs till which date or which year? So you have to tell me one thing that deadline for implementation of the cassette swap in the ATMs extended till which year? So Reserve Bank of India for the second time extended the timeline for the implementation of the cassette swap in all automated teller machine 
by one year and now all the cassettes will be placed by 31st of March 2023. So this extension is due to request received by the Reserve Bank of India from various banks as well as Indian Banking Association citing various constraints in meeting the timeline. But you have to remember what is this cassette. So cassette is like the currency notes inside the ATM are stacked in boxes. These are called cassettes and each cassette is loaded with one denomination. And in July 2021, RB had advised banks to use locable cassettes in their ATMs which shall be swapped at the time of cash replenishment and it was to be implemented in a phased manner and all the ATM achieve cassette swap by the March 31st 2021 then RB later extended the deadline to 31st of March 2022 now it is extended by the year again and now it will be achieved by the uh, date of 31st of March 2023. So as of December end of 2021, there are total 2.41 lakh ATMs in the country and out of these 2.11 lakh were bank owned ATMs and 30,000 were owned by the white label ATM operators. So you have to remember RB extended the deadline for the implementation of the cassette swap in the ATMs till 31st of March 2023. Examiner can ask the year then remember the answer is one year. So it is extended by one year. Moving to next question, you can also see here RB extended the deadline for implementation of cassette swap in the ATMs by year. And as per the estimate, each ATM will require three sets of five cassettes, one set in the ATM, one in transit and another at branch or cash in transit company ready for loading next day. So you don't have to remember this technical information. Just remember it is extended by one year. Next question is which organization and HSBC India has agreed to set up USD 100 million partial guarantee program for the microfinance institutions. So uh, Asian Development Bank and HSBC India. So answer of this question is ADB. Asian Development Bank and HSBC India have agreed to set up a 100 million USD partial guarantee program to help over 4 lakh micro borrowers and largely women owned micro enterprises across India. So this is very very important. So this is Asian Development Bank and HSBC India to set up 100 million dollar partial guarantee program for the micro financial institution sector. And remember this is ADB's first partnership with the HSBC Bank and under the terms of the agreement an equivalent of USD 30 million in aggregate financing would be disbursed to the three micro financing institutions in India by April 2022 to stimulate the partnership. And HSBC will expand its financing to the micro financial institutions and the non-bank finance enterprises with ADB partially guaranteeing the loans. It means loan will be provided by HSBC but guarantee will be provided by Asian Development Bank. And micro financial institutions have involved as lifelines of the marginalized consumer such as low income households, small companies during the COVID-19 pandemic because maximum loan dispersed by micro financial institutions during the COVID-19 time period. And remember about Asian Development Bank, ADB is very important. Total members are 68 including India and uh, India has been a member of Asian Development Bank since 1966 when it was established and president is Mast Sugu and headquarters is in Manila, Philippines. Now moving to next question. Nabet India or Nabet India and which company partnered to start an initiative for women's health and wellness? So this is very static question just remember the question as same as in slide and this is PNB housing finance so answer of this question is A. So Nabet India and Punjab National Bank housing finance company have partnered to start an initiative for the women health and wellness. So you can also see here this picture Nabet India and PNB housing finance. Nabet India would manufacture sanitary napkins at its own facility and PNB housing finance would provide machinery support it means the finance will be provided by PNB housing finance. So under the partnership agreement, Nabet India will promote livelihood and employment opportunities for the women particularly in the rural areas and also promote health and wellness to improve their quality of life. And the napkins will be distributed to the working women, school and college going girls and villages in need. And Nabet India would also start a livelihood scheme to promote the health and wellness amongst the rural women and it will create employment for the underprivileged communities. So remember Nabet India will provide wellness ideas and also improve the health conditions of the women but the finance will be provided by PNB Housing Finance. Now we are moving to the next question. Which state launched crop insurance portal for the Mukhya Mantri Bhagwani Bhima Yojana? This is already ongoing scheme of the state and uh, this is Mukhya Mantri Bhagwani Bhima Yojana. 
and this portal is launched by Haryana government. So answer of this question is B. So the Haryana Agriculture Minister J.P. Dalalji launched the portal of Mukhya Mantri Bhagwani Yojana or Bima Yojana and with an initial corpus of rupees 10 crore rupees for this scheme which means 10 crore rupees will be provided for this Bhagwani Bima Yojana and Haryana Agriculture Minister launched this scheme. And under this scheme, the farmers will be compensated for the damage caused to their crops due to the adverse weather or the natural calamities. And the scheme compensates a sum of rupees 30,000 per acre for the vegetable and spices and 40,000 per acre for the fruits which will be compensated to the farmers upon a claim via four categories like 25% claim, 50%, 75% and 100% based on the survey. And the farmer's contribution will be only 2.5% of the insured amount like only 750 per acre for the vegetable and uh, spices and 1000 rupees per acre for the fruits. Rest amount will be paid by the government. And remember the scheme covers 21 crops like 14 vegetable crops like tomato, onion, potato, cauliflower and uh, 2 spices are there like turmeric and garlic, 5 fruits are there mango, kinno, berry, guava and lychee. But monitoring of this scheme, review and resolution of the disputes will be done through the state level and district level committees constituted under the Prime Minister Fasal Bima Yojana. So you have to remember the name of this scheme. This is Mukhya Mantri Bhagwani Bima Yojana and this is started by the Haryana government. And who is the governor? Governor of Haryana is Bandaru Dattatreya ji and the Chief Minister is Manohar Lal Khattar ji. Moving to next question. Who is appointed as Managing Director and CEO of Mahindra Manulife Investment Management Private Limited? Again, very static question. We are covering under the very important because this is one of the appointment. Otherwise, you can just remember the question as him as in slide. And who become the Managing Director and CEO of this Mahindra Manulife Investment Management Private Limited is Anthony Haredia. So answer of this question is D. So Anthony Haredia was appointed as the MD and CEO of Mahindra Manulife Investment Management Company. It was also known as Mahindra Asset Management Company and he will assume charge on 1st of April 2022. It means he becomes the MD and CEO on 1st of April 2022. Earlier this position was with Ashutosh Bishnoi, Ashutosh Bishnoi who retired on 31st of March. And uh, this person Anthony Haredia was previously worked with the Morgan Stanley Investment Management as the Managing Director. And in April 2020, you can remember Mahindra Finance divested a 49% stake in its fully owned subsidiary. And now it become the Mahindra Manulife Investment Management because they sell 49% to the Manulife Investment Management of Singapore. Now total share is 51%, 49, 49 to the Manulife Investment Management and 51 with the Mahindra. So just remember, this is Mahindra Manulife Investment Management Company. Moving to next question, this is European Space Agency Antenas to track Chandrayaan-3 and Aditya L1 mission. So European Space Agency Antenas will be in action to track the satellites of, satellites of ISRO. One satellite is like Chandrayaan-3 and second one is like Aditya L1 or the other missions of ISRO. So launch of Chandrayaan-3 will be India's third mission to the moon. And European Space Agency station sports Aditya L1 as well as the Chandrayaan-3 from the beginning of launch till the end of the mission. And remember the mission of Aditya L1 is the study of sun. This is related to sun. And Chandrayaan-3, the mission of Chandrayaan-3 lander is to land its rover on the surface of the moon. So remember these two missions will be operated with the help of the European Space Agency. So European Space Agency's antennas will be in action to track the satellites of ISRO. One is Aditya L1, second one is the Chandrayaan-3. And remember about ISRO, ISRO's head is uh, S. Somnath, it means chairman is S. Somnath and it was established in uh, 1969 and headquarters in Bengaluru. Moving to next section, it is our important question section. But first of all, you have to like this video, share this video as much as possible. And please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link. Here is the question, who is appointed to an high level expert group on the net zero emissions commitment of the non-state entities? And uh, you have to just remember the question as same as in slide and United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres appointed Arunba Ghosh. Answer of this question is A, Dr. Arunba Ghosh who is the CEO of Council on Energy, Council on Energy, Environment and Water, which is known as CEEW. So he is appointed in the high level expert group on the net zero emission commitments of the non-state entities. And uh, this is uh, Arunba Ghosh, who is the CEO of Council on Energy, Environment and Water, appointed by the United Nations Chief to high level expert group on the net zero emission commitment. So the main objective is to develop stronger 
and clearer standard of the net zero emission pledges by the non state entities including businesses investors cities regions and speed up their implementation and this is total 16 member expert group which comprises independent experts drawn from the different countries moving to next section it is our one liner important points here is the first point zika zika stands for japan international cooperation agency who signed a loan agreement with india to provide japanese Japanese official development assistance loans to 312 billion yen for seven projects. So in simple word, you have to remember Japan International Cooperation Agency provided some loan amount. This is 312 billion yen for the seven projects implementation in India and the contribution to strengthening the Japan India partnership and marks the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relation by supporting the climate change response and building a resilient society. Next is Minamata Convention on Mercury. This is very, very important, especially for the environment. Indonesia and United Nations sought sport. So the government of Indonesia and United Nations is looking for the sport and commitment from the parties to the Minamata Convention for a Bali declaration on combating global illegal trade of mercury. So just remember this Minamata Convention is related to mercury. And Minamata Convention of Mercury is the most recent global agreement on environment and health and it was adopted in the year of 2013 and entered into force in 2017. And it was the first global environmental agreement negotiated in the 21st millennium to address public health issues due to mercury. So that's why remember Minamata Convention is related to mercury. Next, External Affairs Minister S. Jayashankar visit to Maldives and Sri Lanka. Don't remember, just remember both the countries are India's key maritime neighbours in the Indian Ocean region. Next, Government of India to borrow 8.45 lakh crore in the uh, uh, H1, 60% of the financial year 23 estimate. So just remember this is the first half and the Government of India has decided to secure a fund of 8.45 lakh crore through borrowing in consultation with the Reserve Bank of India in the first half. It means we are talking about from April to September period of financial year of 2022-23 and it accounts almost 60% of the total borrowing plan in the financial year 23. Next, FinMaps gets license from two organizations. One is, one is Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority which is known as PFRDA. Second is Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India to sell national pension, national pension scheme and insurance policies. So you have to just remember these license will enable FinCap to sell insurance and the NPS products to its customer as a verified seller and help expand to its customer base. Next, Bharat Dynamics Limited signs MOU on the field of defense with the Tawazu Economic Council of United Arab Emirates. So just remember there are two organizations, one is Bharat Electronics Limited, second is Tawazu Economic Council which is related to United Arab Emirates and it is to explore new business opportunities in the various areas of the mutual interest in the field of defense. So they will also explore the export possibility of the products to reach out to the global demands. Moving to the question of the day, what was the question of 1st of April 2022, question was very simple. When the banks are not able to pay the amount to the depositor, it is called. So risk arises due to the inability of the bank to meet its obligation and it refers to a situation when any asset may not be realized in cash. So in simple word you can say that it is a mismatch of assets and liabilities and it is known as liquidity risk. So answer of this question is B. So moving to the question of the day, what is the question of the day? IRDA headquarters situated at which place? So you have to tell me answer in the comment box. I am waiting your answer but please like this video. Please share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group and press this bell button so that you can receive the notification on time. But it is a fair cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section. But don't take life so much serious. Life is fun. Always be happy like this. Thank you guys. Take care and bye-bye.